currently heading over to the studio today at the start of a new week and I was just reflecting on how much of a good idea it was to get the studio because of coronavirus uh, and everything that's going on. Uh, it's just been really fortunate that I decided to do that. I'm very happy that I was able to be in a position to get the studio. Um, it's been a great place to be able to get stuff done and you know start to pursue some of my own projects especially when it's been difficult for a lot of other people to get to work or get to places that help uh, inspire them um, and to do good work uh, so just reflecting on that and I'm just you know really grateful that I'm able to afford uh, and to have the studio that I have so I got a bunch of these because I only had two of them Therefore, the seamless up there um, to basically hold it down and prevent it from rolling all over the place when I pull it down. I just finished testing that out and it all looks good. I wanted to take some time to read some of the comments I've been getting on the vlogs I've been putting out lately. Thank you so much to anybody who's been consistently watching uh, the vlogs that I've been putting out. Uh, thank you all to the people who've been commenting and leaving some nice words on it. So I just wanted to read some of them out and also some of the questions. So uh, Kevin Mendoza wrote on my Instagram post uh, asking what lens do you use for your talking head? Your 1080 looks cleaner than mine. Uh, as you saw in the last video, the lens that I'm currently using, which is slightly a little bit cracked and broken on the edges but not in the glass, is the uh, Sigma 24-70 to uh, lens. And I'm thinking about trying out the G Master, the Sony G Master 16-35, to uh, but after my little incident with this lens, I might be a little bit more careful with that one. So that's what I'm currently using and I have been using for the most recent vlogs. Uh, Mike, who is an uh, old friend of mine from Long Island, had messaged me saying that I have an incredible gift. Uh, the vlog looks awesome. Thanks so much, Mike. I really appreciate that. Uh, it gets me to keep doing them. Uh, Sean, who is someone I knew in high school, who I don't think I've ever spoken to since high school, uh, left a comment on one of my Facebook posts saying, uh, I'm impressed with the vlogs, man. Keep it up. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. Uh, these comments, like I said, uh, will get me to keep doing these. Uh, Goober, who is a friend of mine, also from Long Island, commented on the last video when me and Jess were playing Totally Reliable Delivery Service, asking if we've played Humans Fall Flat. Uh, I have played it. Uh, Jess hasn't played it yet, but uh, me and Christy played that, and we beat the entire game in one night. Uh, once you solve all the puzzles in that, there's not that much replay value in it, but if you really like that game, I highly recommend playing Totally Reliable Delivery Service because the mechanics and the physics of the game are exactly the same, but it's more of an open world and there's, from what I see, a lot more objects to interact with that do a lot of funnier stuff. Uh, so if you like Humans Fall Flat, I highly recommend playing Totally Reliable Delivery Service. Gonna keep doing that the whole walk back. Yo, let me be great. Let me bask, yo. <laughs> we just got a new package. I've had this dining table since I moved in here, but I thought it was time for a change since I've been at home a lot during quarantine. Uh, I've been making slow improvements to the apartment and I'm going to be replacing this dining table with something new. So this is the new table. It is the Markerad Virgil Ablo table. Um, I was looking at the Lasabo, which is technically the same table as this, but apparently this is made of wood, but when we got it delivered from StockX, we saw a hole in the bottom from the delivery, and it didn't really look like wood at all. It was pretty hollow. So we just finished our first meal on the new dining table. 
and we've been trying out these new Ben and Jerry's flavors that are non-dairy. So this is caramel almond brittle. This is chocolate caramel cluster, and they're good, right? Yeah, they're mad good. I mean, aside from Ben and Jerry being some badass protesters. Um, they make some really good non-dairy ice cream, so if you don't really do dairy, um, or you can't do dairy, or you can't do dairy, I recommend this. I think the caramel almond brittle is my favorite flavor. Um, I bought this just to try it out, and it seems to be, it's like more like a chocolate ice cream, and it seems to be Jess's favorite flavor so far. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. I got, so my friend Maka, <laughs> call me. so my friend Maka found out that I had um, unregulated tortillas that I didn't have a plan for. So she mailed me these chilies, chilies from her store um, so that I can make like chilaquilas, if I'm even pronouncing that right. They sound like Moroccos. I know. Is that all the seeds? It's in yeah. There? Yeah, so I've never made I've never made anything with chilies before. Mm -hmm. So she actually sent me the seasoning. She sent me the seasoning and a handwritten recipe. I know. Keep that secret. Oh. I added the the chilies, which I took a lot of the seeds out because I'm weak sauce and a handful of the seasoning that Maka sent me and just some water. Um, no measurements because she didn't really send me measurements and I'm just gonna blend. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but tonight we're making, what was it? Uh, Chicken air fryer taquitos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely broke hot. The other day, Jess was part of an online panel talking about anti racism, and there was over like 200 people that attended that, and it was really good. And Jess dropped a lot of big knowledge gems um, in that, so I'll put a couple of my favorite ones in there in the video, but uh, I'm gonna leave a link down below. It's all up on YouTube, this like hour and a half panel that she was a part of if you wanna check it out. Do you wanna be right or do you wanna be effective? And a lot of the times we walk into these conversations really needing to believe that we're right and needing them to see that we're right. I'm gonna let you know right now, you're gonna stress yourself out and maybe you wanna try a different approach, right? Um, so here are some things, right? So do you, and I think what happens a lot is when we don't, when we walk into a conversation not really having a clear idea of our objective, we talk about everything. And the thing about race, that's something so pervasive as anti-blackness, it's hard to have a conversation without bringing in the world, right? So how does, that conversation is gonna go everywhere. So do you want them to relate emotionally to the Black Lives Matter movement? Maybe you wanna really stick with that. Um, do you want them to explore their own anti-blackness in a way that's personal to them? Then maybe you should just stick with that, right? Do you want them to see how important this is for you and your friendship, right? Then you want to stay with that, right? Um, try to stick to that because, um, you know, I would say use that as an anchor when the conversation starts to feel out of control because then you can also know, you know what, I'm going to leave this alone here and I'll come back another time. Once you start bringing all this other stuff, you lose them, they lose you, and then that's it, okay? As far as the, the wording of the question, which is how do you know when you've done enough? I think that word enough is a very fuzzy word. Um, I think when it comes to something as systemic and just global <laughs> um, as anti-blackness, it's a moving goalpost that 
uh, depending on where the person telling you you're enough, you'll never be enough. So I think, you know, I want you to kind of let go of that word enough um, and just see how you can always be an active participant. In the same way, as far as like learning a language, I want you to or I want to encourage um, creating just smaller goalposts for yourself, right? You're not going to be able, maybe you won't be able to have this high level conversation in this new language, but maybe you can learn how to say one word differently. Uh, maybe you can learn how to unlearn things first, right? A lot of the times if you're, if you know English and you want to learn like an Asian language where the syntax is completely different, you're going to actually have to unlearn. You have to un, uh, attach yourself to the Western syntax in order to accept the Eastern syntax, right? So there's a lot of unlearning that you have to do. I think it depends on what stage you're in, but you want to set goalposts for yourself, right? So I'm going to end this video here, but if you're enjoying these videos and you're not currently subscribed, please consider subscribing with the button below. Uh, otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.